Most days I found it totally ironic that mom drove Frankie to school because he hated to ride the bus. Well, I rode the bus because I hated the excruciating car ride with mom. Most days I could find a spot somewhere in the middle, curl into my C-shape, tuck my knees in front of me, and just completely disappear. But lately, Christy Bruder had been a real pain. Not like that was old news. I couldn't stand her anyways. Never could. Christy was one of those girls who was popular because most everyone was afraid not to be her friend. She was big and bulky and she had a gut that stood out belligerently in front of her. And somehow, she was captain of the softball team. I never could figure that one out. I just couldn't see her outrunning anyone to first base. But she must have done it at least once or twice because there's no reason else why she would be. Or maybe the coach was just too afraid to cut her. Who knows? High school can be a foreign world, even to those attending it. It's a time of change, of discovering yourself. It's a time of trying to fit in, or for some, just disappear. There are rules, but they aren't always written rules. And then there's the pecking order. Bullies are usually at the top, making it difficult for those on the bottom. May 2nd, 2008 started out just like a normal day for Valerie in The Hate List by Jennifer Brown. In elementary, Christy called me Bucky Beaver. In sixth grade, she started a rumor that I wore a thong, which in middle school was a huge deal. And in high school, she decided she didn't like my hair and my makeup. So she started the nickname Sister Death, which everyone thought was hilarious. The bus slid to a stop, and then to another. I kept my eyes glued to the window. I saw a terrier nosing through the trash. His head was all but completely covered in a trash bag, and I wondered how he could breathe or what he found in there that would keep him so excited. The bus got up going again, and I turned up my MP3 player as the noise ratcheted up exponentially with the number of kids that got on. I felt a bump against my shoulder, and I ignored it, figuring it was just someone walking by. And then I felt another hard one, and the cords were ripped out of my ear. What the hell? I rewound my cord and I looked over. There was Christy with her wide-eyed, fake, innocent look. Go away, Christy. I don't know what you're talking about, Sister Death. Maybe you're having a hallucination. Maybe got some bad eggs or something. Whatever. I settled back into my C-shape, put in my headphones, and closed my eyes. Just as we turned into the garden driveway, I felt another hard shove on my shoulder, and then she ripped the cords out and my mp3 player scattered across the floor. I reached out and grabbed it, and I turned the switch, turn it off and on, but nothing. It was dead. What is your problem? Again, Christy was giving me that fake, wide-eyed look, and Helen and a couple of other people over there were, had their stupid laughs, and was, the bus door was open, and we stood up. That's some sort of kid instinct, I think. Bus door's open, you stand up, no matter what you're doing. It's one of the constants of life. You're born, you die, you stand up when the bus door's open. Christy and I stood within inches of each other. I could smell the pancake syrup on her. She sneered at me, giving me a slow top to bottom. In a hurry to get to a funeral, maybe dump Nick for a nice, cool corpse. Oh wait, <laughs> Nick is a corpse. After all these years, she still hadn't grown tired of the same stupid jokes. Mom told me once that if I just ignored her, she'd stop. But obviously that didn't happen. And on days like today, ignoring her was easier said than done. I was so over this rivalry thing, but no way was I gonna let her get away with breaking my stuff. I, kept, I held eye contact with her, refusing to back down. I glared at her and got off the bus. I saw Jeremy's car roll up by the football field and Nick got out. I waved for him. He caught my motion and started walking methodically, slowly towards me. Hey, baby! I wrapped my arms around him. He sort of dodged me, but leaned down and kissed me and slung his arm around my shoulders. It felt so nice to be in his arms again. We started walking, our hips bumping one another. I would let you borrow my MP3 player for first period, but Chrissy Bruder busted on the bus. I've been wanting to do something about her for a long time. I was happy. I smiled. I was just so
so excited that he was finally going to stand up for me. He looked so weird. I wondered what he was on, what he, him and Jeremy took this morning. We plunged in through the doors, the wind caught hold of mine. We rounded into the commons, where the orderly motion of the halls poured into the stagnant milling of kids getting in there before school gossip. Over there! There she is. Let's go get this finish. Nick unzipped his jacket slowly, but didn't take it off. He reached Christy a few steps before I did, and he must have bumped into her because I saw her pitch forward a little bit and almost knock into her friend Willa. What is your problem? And then I was, I just wanted to hear everything that he said. I didn't want to miss a single second of him scaring the crap out of her. And that's why I'm so sure of what I heard. I still hear it every day. You've been on the list for a long time. What list? She looked down and her eyes grew wide and then she started laughing. I, I looked over to see what she was laughing at. And then there was the noise. It wasn't so much a noise in my ears as it was in my head. It sounded like the world was shutting down on me. I flung my hands up and I closed my eyes. The only thought I had was that this was something bad. I reached out to grab Nick, but he'd stepped aside and I found myself looking at Christy. She had her wide mouth like she was going to say something and her hands were grabbing her stomach and they were covered with blood. She wavered and began to fall forward. I jumped back and she fell between Nick and I. And there was blood pooling around her. And in the middle of all the blood, there was a hole in her shirt. And then everything snapped in real time. Kids were running, trying to get to the doors, and others were just standing around like someone had just pulled a prank and they were sorry that they'd missed it. Nick rushed into the crowd too. I think I screamed, but to this day, I can't be sure.